year and our overall theme for this year is set your heart. Month of January, call to serve. Month of February, call to sacrifice. And this month, call to obey. I don't know about you, but as a parent raising children, there's always in our mind and always in our heart that when we speak anything to our children, we would like them to obey. Many times, when I was growing up, my mom and my sisters, especially my older sister, would say to me, why didn't you listen and obey? Man, I tell you, when I was growing up, some of you know my story. Those of you who don't, I was a rascal. Very, very naughty. All right? And I was like in gangs. I was growing up because my uncles and my brother-in-laws, they were all in gangs. So I grew up in that environment surrounded with gangsters and got into things that I shouldn't have gotten. But I did not listen. Neither did I obey what my mom said to me, my older sister. Growing up in a Asian culture, we have a, um, a, 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 a thing that we, we respect those that are older than us. We want to listen to them and listen to their advice or their admonishment to us. So I was very, very naughty when I was young. Okay. Thank the Lord for his grace and mercy. I'm still a little bit naughty. Not that much. But you know, God wants us to really take a note this month in the book of Samuel, chapter 15, 22. An account where Samuel was speaking and he was saying, What is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen. Everybody, please say this word. Listen. Ready? At the count of three. One, two, three. Listen. Listen, okay? Obedience is better than sacrifice. And submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Listen, this is what Prophet Samuel said. This is the main thing in today. You see, God is always speaking. But the problem is, are we? Listen. Every week, every time when you get up in the morning, you go to work or you prepare yourself to do whatever you need to do, God is always speaking to you. But the challenge is, are you listening? Or do you know, can you differentiate the voice of God in your spirit when he's speaking to you? In the book of John, Jesus says, for my sheep hears my voice. For my sheep knows my voice. And God is speaking to us. And he's wanting us to understand today that besides the sacrifice that you and I bring to him. Last month, we talked about that. Call to sacrifice. But, what is the word of God saying? There is more than just a sacrifice, but the obedience. By faith, in Hebrews 11 verse 8, it says, When God, or when called to go to a place, this is Abraham, he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and he went, even though he did not know where he was going. This is incredible. When God spoke to Abraham and said, Pack up. I don't want you to go to the place that you will receive as your inheritance. He didn't know where he was going. But the word of God says, Abraham what? Obeyed. And he went. Even though he wasn't sure where he was going. The you and I today, God will speak to us. I believe with all of mine. He will speak to you about things in your life. Or maybe about a direction, maybe about a plan, maybe about something he's asking you to do. But you may not have all the answers. 
you are uncertain, you're unsure. Maybe you're a bit scared of what God is asking you to do. But if you know it's the voice of God that's speaking to you, you got to what? Obey and you got to go. You see, we are all saved by grace. This is what we Grace is the means to just flip back, back into this life. Okay, grace is the means. And obedience is the key to tap into all that God has for us. Grace is the means. Obedience is the way. What does that mean? That means you and I are saved by grace through faith. It is because of God's grace for you and me that I am standing here and that you are sitting down there or you're watching online today. It's all because of the grace of God that we are here. But obedience is the key now, is the way to tap into all that God has for us. Listen to me. I don't want to be a person who's going to live on earth for a number of days or a number of years. And then finally, when it's time for me to go, then I'm going to ask myself, what have I done? What have I achieved? What is it that I've made in this journey that is significant to the life of somebody or to the kingdom of God and his church? What have I done? Have I obeyed God when he speaks to me about doing something? You see, God speaks to all of us. Many of us have come from, obviously, different countries, different regions, and Maybe we migrated to Australia for a purpose or reason. God spoke to us about doing something. And we took that risk, not knowing, not sure how it would unfold, how would it become. But yet, there is something in our hearts. You know that God has spoken, and you do. Do you know that there is an old song? I was singing it this morning to Darren. Darren said, I don't think I was born yet. And then someone else said, yeah, I know that song. I know that song. There is a song, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. How many of you remember that? Yay. That shows our age, guys. How cool. That's wonderful. But these are the song and the hymns that we sang when we were young. When I was young, I always remember singing this in Sunday school. A teacher would say, Ray, remember this. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. You want to be happy in Jesus? It's to trust. I want to bring your attention today to an incredible account of what happened when Jesus stepped into your life and into your picture, into all that you do day in and day out. In Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Let's look into this account because I want to draw your attention today that you will capture something very powerful and very significant. He says, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him. And guess who? what they were they doing? They were listening to the word of God. You know the incredible thing is, listen carefully. They were not just listening to the word of God. They were actually seeing the word of God in person. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Who was made flesh. So they were listening to the word of God. Jesus then he saw at the water's edge Two boats. Left there by the fishermen. Who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, 
This is what's going to be called Simon Peter. And ask him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Picture. Do you remember what I said last week? When you read the scripture, read it with your senses. Imagine. Smell. Feel. Sense. Hear what is going on. Picture that. And Jesus saw his boats and jumped into the boat belonging to Simon. And tell him to put out a little further. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Just smell the salt water. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Verse 5, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. How many of you like to fish? One, you're my friend forever. You know what? I love fishing. I've loved fishing since I moved, or even since when I was a child. Kuala Lumpur, I always love fishing. I've actually ran away from my classes and went fishing. I was meant to learn Mandarin classes. Mandarin, they teach Mandarin classes when I was studying at school. And I just took off from those classes and went fishing. I wish I didn't because then you would not, I would have known a lot more Mandarin today. But I didn't. I just went fishing. Can you imagine Simon who has fished all night and caught nothing. But then he said, because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid, from now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. This is an incredible account of an incredible miracle. You can imagine catching, trying to catch fish all night and caught nothing. These guys are professional fishermen. They know that area. They've been there for years. In the morning they go out. In the evening they come back. They've been there for a long time. But that day they caught nothing until Jesus stepped onto Simon Peter's boat. Something happened. A miracle took place because of Jesus' intervention. But this is an interesting story. I want to say something to you and I today. At the age of my next blessing, of your next blessing often lies what I call the greatest frustration. Anybody here has been frustrated before? Please raise your hand. If you haven't, I've got good news for you. They're coming. That's life. We all have frustrations. Whether they be the big frustration or a small frustration. But you can imagine Simon Peter fish all night caught nothing. Do you think he'll be frustrated? He's a professional fisherman. He does it for a living. But caught nothing. The frustration. I've been to fishing trips that sometimes I catch little amount. But there's hardly been, for me personally, been a trip that I caught nothing. I can imagine how frustrated it would be. But I, sometimes I would come back maybe three or four Last time I went out to fish, we 
caught a gummy shark about that big, and we caught about three snappers and two nice King George pilot. Nice to eat. And I was happy, but I wish I could have caught more, but hey, it's what it is. Fishing, you can never tell. Sometimes when we go out there, it's so funny with the boys, I will start praying. I said, Lord, I command the fish to come. In Jesus' name, I command them, Lord, come to this side of my boat, not to Darren's side, but on my side. And he would often go, hey, I'm going to catch more than you. I say, dreams are free, brother. But we will have this bit of a competition. And also with Nelson, sometimes he comes. But you know what? At the age, listen carefully, of your next blessing. So if you are feeling today, maybe a little bit low, you're feeling, what's going on, Lord? I've been praying, God, what is going on? Why am I feeling this frustration? God, the things that have been taken away from me, well, I'm feeling a bit frustrated. I'm feeling a bit disappointed. But at the age of your next blessing lies your greatest frustration. And God will often, this is an incredible thing, He will often perform the greatest miracle at our lowest point. When I'm thinking, God, how is it all going to work out? God, how, how, why am I going through such Grief or pain or suffering or misery. God, why is this like that? Have you ever said that sort of prayer? Have you ever asked God that sort of question? I'm sure you have. God, why did this happen to my family? But God, why did that happen? God, why did this sickness came about? See, God will often perform the greatest miracle at our lowest point. I'm not sure whether any one of you realize this. Okay, The Bible says there were what? In the lake of Gennesaret, which in the Sea of Galilee. Did you know that? It's located 214 meters below sea level. It is the lowest freshwater lake on earth. It's not many of you who know that, do you? The Sea of Galilee, Lake of Gennesaret, is located 214 meters below sea level. It is the lowest freshwater lake on earth and the second lowest lake in the world after the dates. And yet Jesus chose this location. Jesus chose this place where it is the lowest lake on the earth to perform an incredible miracle. Because there were the disciples James, John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon, Peter, and then the other partners. Not just that. Don't forget when we read the first part of the scripture, there was a large crowd following Jesus. And they were listening to him teaching and speaking the word of God. So Jesus chose this place for a specific reason. Why? Because Simon was frustrated. Not just Simon. You can imagine the others that are with him trying to catch a fish. Frustration. They feel, man, this is like the lowest point. What's happening this week? How come there's no fish? We always have fish. This week, terrible. But yet they are at Lowest freshwater lake on earth. Simon fished, it says, all night and caught nothing until Jesus got into his boat. Until he hear these words, because you say so. I don't know about you, but I have experienced those moments. When I say, God, what's going on? I don't understand, Lord. Why is my family going through this? Lord, I don't understand why my brother was so sick. 
Lord, and he died at the age of 46, 42 children. Lord, I don't understand why my younger sister had cancer. Lord, I don't understand. Even as my sister Joanne said to me, I was there by our brother Jason. In the last moments of his life, he is trying to whisper something to me. He's trying to say something to me, but he couldn't. I could not grasp. I could not hear what he was trying to say to me. In his last moments, when he took his last breath, God, I don't understand. That was a low point in my life. God, I don't understand. As soon as my sister attended to my brother, my older brother, he died at 46. In the following week, this is an incredible thing. The following week then my sister found out that she was diagnosed with cancer of the colon, stage four. Just a week later, she rang me and she said to me, oh my God, what's happened? Changed her life forever. Her outlook, her perspective on life just completely, overnight changed. She said, I'm not sure how longer I'm going to be here. It changed my life, she says. It's just a week later after I've attended to our brother. And I say to him, this is what my sister said to me. She said, I say to my sister Joy, I say to my brother Jason, don't worry Jason, I will journey with you in this summer. She said that. And the following week, she got the cancer. Stage four. Some of you that have been in church here with me for a long time, you will remember back in Greythorn days, Richard and Jenny, remember that? Jenny, Greythorn days. My sister came from New Zealand. She was living in New Zealand. She came and visited us. We are a team of leaders. I invited my sister to come forward. I said, Joanne, why don't you come forward? We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for God to touch you and heal you and restore your health. She came with her husband. And it came to the front. She was just crying. We prayed for her. One of the leaders says, whatever illness this is, whatever cancer is, is, come and meet Jesus. When Jesus jumped into your boat, something happens. Sister came. We prayed for her. And she went back to New Zealand. A week later, she went to the hospital or the doctor, the clinic. The doctor who was looking after her through this process asked my sister, where have you been? My sister said, I've been to Australia to see my brother and to visit his church. The doctor said to my sister, something has happened in your body. My sister said, what happened? She said, we took some of your blood to test it and there is no cancer cell. No cancer marker in your blood. No cancer marker. My sister was saying, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then my, the doctor said to my sister, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. My sister rang me and told me, there's no cancer. Guess what? It's been more than 15 years. She is free. But then, when it all happened, we were so low. We were so low. It's like the lowest point of our lives. When we are just about to quit, the word, listen to me, will draw you into your calling. That's why the people will listen to the Lord. Simon Peter, I fished all night, but we caught nothing. But because you say so. Listen, church. God will speak to you this week. You know your situation. God knows your situation. Whatever it may be, he will speak to you. And I want to challenge you to rise up to the occasion where you're going to say, God, I don't understand, but because you say so. Amen. 
And many of us read the book of Luke chapter 5 about this incredible miracle. How Jesus obviously said to the disciples, cast your nets, go out deeper. Cast your nets on the other side and you will get a huge catch. But many of us have forgotten Luke chapter 4. What happened prior to Jesus coming to do this incredible miracle at the lowest salt freshwater lake on planet earth what happened in luke chapter 4 did you take note of that jesus was rejected from his hometown in nazareth he was teaching them the people rejected him that's why he says a prophet will not be welcome in their hometown so jesus got the rejection so he knows what it's all about he knows what it is to be at your lowest point. I don't know about you. Hey, how many of you like the idea when someone rejects you? It's hard, isn't it? When somebody rejects you and says, oh, oh, you never make it. Oh, you're not good enough. Who do you think you are? Haven't you done that before? Haven't you failed when you tried it? Yes, Einstein failed too many times. Who do you think you are? The rejection. Jesus was rejected. The crowd, like I said, was listening to the word of God. And they see the word revealed in flesh. You and I today read. You and I pray and intercede and sought the Lord. Hallelujah. What a great song we sing. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he answered. Therefore, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. And so please, when Darren sang the song this night, and he says, we're going to sing a new song. I was listening to it. As I was listening, all these things just came back. You know, <laughs> Darren said to me this morning, did you get some of these memories of coming back to you and say, Lord, I'm so sorry I failed you? It made me laugh. Oh, God, I'm so sorry I didn't listen to what you said. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. God, help me to trust you. Help me to obey you. Help me to know that you are in control. Have you ever had those experiences? Yeah. Where you did not listen. Where you did not obey. Where you refused to take heed to what God has spoken. And you just go your own way. You've seen many people do that. They go their own way. They do their own thing. Until everything starts to crumble. Then they're at their lowest point. Then they go, God, are you there? And God says, I've always been here. I've never moved. Have you? I've never moved. You see, when we come to God, when we ask Him of something, what I call this today, conditional miracle, is reserved for those who choose to, everybody say, The promises of God are yes and amen. The promises of God are yes and amen. The blessing of God and the miracles of God are conditional. It means God says, will you obey? Will you choose to obey? Will you say when God puts his thumb on certain things or certain areas or certain aspects of our life to be elected? Trust. Could be, oh God, I don't understand, so I'm going to quit. Just tend to think. But when God says, don't worry, I've got you in the palm of my hand. Don't worry, I will show you. And I will choose sometimes to delay in the working of my miracles when you are at the lowest point of your life. 
That's when I turn up. Does I now say to you, can I jump into your boat? But God, I've tried for many years, many nights, I've got nothing. But can I jump into your boat? Isn't that me saying to Lindsay, Lindsay, can I borrow your boat? Don't forget, there's so many other boats. They're partners. They're different people. The Bible says at the age of the waters, there was two boats. One belonging to Simon Peter. And Jesus chose to go into Simon Peter's boat. Why not the other boat? Have you thought about that? Why? But he chose Simon Peter because he knew what the outcome is going to be for Simon Peter to experience this incredible miracle that each time when something comes, each time when Simon is at the lowest point of his life, he will always remember, because you say so. Because you say so. Why did Jesus choose Simon Peter's boat and not the other boat? Number two. Conditional miracle, okay? Number one. Number two, that's what I call creative collaboration. God is interested in us. And he wants to use us. He wants to make sure that we are part of this miracle. Why did he choose Simon Peter? Why? Because God is interested. Use you and I to be a part of this miracle. I want you to imagine Simon Peter, the moment when they try to pull up the net, fish the other net, fish. The Bible says the net was about to break as they haul the fish up. You can imagine Simon Peter's expression. Oh my, OMG, Jesus. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I've never seen such a thing. Have you guys seen such a catch? We've been catching this for years. We've been in this region for years, but we've never seen such a catch. When God taps into you, when he's asking you and I, he's saying, can I use your boat? Can I jump into your boat? Can I use your life? Ray, you've been walking with me for more than 40 years now. Can I use your life? He said, Lord, you're most welcome. Why, God? Because there is a miracle I'm trying to provide. There is a miracle that I want you to be a part of so that you can see, so you can taste, so that you can know that I am God. I could have done it. This is Jesus, the God creator of the universe, he could have just command all that fish to just flap and from the Sea of Gennesaret or Sea of Galilee and all the fish could just flap and just all be washed onto the shore. He could have done that. But he didn't. But he said, Simon Peter, I'm coming into your boat. I want to jump into your boat. I want to jump into your life too. I want you to be a part of this miracle. I want this creative collaboration. I was speaking to someone last week. I said the Holy Spirit is a creative genius. Listen to me. It's good to have money. People say money makes the world go round. Money makes money to a degree, yes. But guess what? It is creative. That makes money. It is creativity that makes money for people that are wanting to be in business. Steve Jobs just didn't come up with an idea of having the MacBook, the iPad, the iPhone. Somebody didn't just say, let's create a Samsung Pebble. Let's produce the latest LED television or whatever television you want to have. It's also sophisticated. 
There is what I call a creativity. Somebody thought of something and began to put effort and design into it. And then a product is created. Where did they come from? Creating vitamins. Creative ideas. So, God, who is interested, not just on the condition or conditional miracle, but he is he is interested in what we call creative collaboration. And you know my story. And I sat at the piano. I'm not a pianist, but I sat at the piano. I just wanted to worship God in the morning. I was studying at a Bible college and living in the city. I sat at the piano and just played and sang. Before you know it, creative collaboration took place. In half an hour, all the words came together, all the music came together, and that song that came together of that day is being sung in many nations of the world today. Some years ago, we fell into Praise and worship songs throughout Australia and New Zealand. How do I know? Christian Copyright Licensing International, CCL, sent me a mail and said, This song has come into the top 500 for the whole of Australia and New Zealand. How did that happen? Creative collaboration. I'm going to close with this. Peter needed Jesus' blessing. On his boat, so that he can share the catch with others. Jesus wants to bless you to be a blessing. See, if Simon Peter, the partners, did not experience that miracle, they wouldn't have signaled the other boats. Now, listen carefully. When the scripture says he signaled the other boats, B O A T S. How many boats were there? Not even seven. There could have been 20 boats in there. Could have been 30 boats in there. Could have been, I don't know. But he's sick. He says, come on, hey guys. Look, oh, this is incredible. Look at the catch we've got. We can't put it in our boat. It's going to sink. Come on over. Take some of our fish. Is it safe to sign this song? I say, praise God, I'm going to go catch some fish this weekend. And this person said, I'll be praying for you. Listen, when you allow God to borrow your boat, he knows the best place to fish. He knows the best place to fish. He knows the best best place to give you that word. He knows the best time to give you that miracle. He knows the best time to release that provision for you that you've been praying for. He knows the best day, the best month, the best year. But he's got to get onto your boat. It's going to come to you today and say, can I use your boat? You've been thinking, Lord, there's so many other boats here, but why do you want to use my boat? Because I want to have collaborative miracle. I want to have creative collaboration with you so that you can experience what it is that God can do. Oh, God, I trust you. Lord, I sought the Lord and he answered and he heard my prayer. I trust in you, my Savior. The one who will never grow old. Obedience, listen, is the uncertainty, is to push uncertainty into the deep. So, what is it? it <laughs> no, the words have gone wrong. Obedience is. To push out into the deep where there is no certainty. That's what I should have. 
obedience is to push out into deep water where there is no certainty. Lord, because you say so. Because you say so. Because you say so. So this morning, with your eyes closed, everybody close your eyes. I'm going to finish up. Did you know Maybe you are this morning in a position where you are feeling very low, maybe feeling a bit depressed, maybe feeling a bit uncertain. And you're saying, Lord, what's going on? I've fished all night. I've prayed for years. I've waited day in and day out. Lord, I'm really at the lowest point of my life. I may be getting there. But Lord, because you say so, I want to choose to obey. I want to choose to trust and obey because there's no other way than to be happy in Jesus but to trust in Him. With no one looking around, if that's you today, raise your hand. You say, God, I need a refreshing touch. Raise your hand very quickly. Lord, I need because I've been trying to do things my way. Lord God, I've been trying to just do things without even acknowledging who you are. God, I need you today. I need you. Yes, you are. I need you. Hallelujah. Thank you.